guys, it's John from Raspberry Productions. Today you're going to see a Yamaha 612 engine, uh, both off and running, and also the Diane controller, which is there behind me, which has all the various parameters associated with the engine itself. Hi, I'm John. Uh, welcome to Raspberry Productions video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a gas engine as opposed to a, a diesel which you may have seen last time. Uh, this is the Yenbacker 612 uh, gas fired reciprocating engine by Um, it's a fairly big beast. It's got 190mm bore and 220mm stroke per cylinder. That puts it at about 6.25 litres per cylinder. Um, it's a V12 configuration. This is a 60 degree V12. And because it's a gas engine, you might see some familiar things on top. Uh, HT leads and spark plugs. Obviously you wouldn't get that with a, uh, a diesel. Right, so same fashion, I'm going to take you through the induction um, system for this engine, that's the air and gas in this case. We'll start over here. So this is where the gas comes into the machine, down the pipe, past the valve, that's the point of demarcation, uh, and into a centrifugal gas booster set, fairly standard fashion. Boosts it from mains gas pressure, which is low pressure gas, 20 millibar up to the working pressure for the engine. Pressurized side out, up past the meter. We've got solenoid valves and regulators. And if you follow the pipe, it joins the engine just after the air intake section. It has a high pressure gas starting system, which is achieved with this compressor set here and you see the small hard lines that go to um, the inlet again just after the air filters. So these are the air filters 
in the uh, stainless steel can. Fresh air is drawn in by the engine. Gas is added in this section here. So we've got gas and air mix up to the turbochargers. This is a bi-turbo engine. So this is the uh, one on this side and there's a symmetrical one on the, uh, on the far side there. Bi-turbo engine. Uh, after the turbo, pressurized gas air mixture goes over the top and around onto the intake air plenum, which runs in the valley of the V on this block. Used by each cylinder, combusted and exhaust gases escape on the outside. Collected up here, through the hot side of the turbo and out. This machine has a charge air cooler, which cools the pressurized charged air after the turbos, slightly different to an intercooler, which tends to be before the turbos on cars or other applications. Magna Helic gauge, uh, standard fashion differential pressure sensor across the uh, air filter for monitoring how spent it is. Also a close up of these coils. There's a common rail distribution with plug-in coil packs, a bit like a modern uh, a modern car engine really, and it keeps the HT leads nice and short to the uh, to the spark plugs on each cylinder. So the 612 uh, in this application is 2.0 megawatts electrical output and uh, very similar thermal output. Um, we try and utilize all the electricity from the machine uh, and all the thermal uh, heat generated by it, which is a bit of a challenge. Uh, we're gonna go into some detail as why that's challenging later in the video. I'd just like to show you the big plate heat exchangers up the end of the uh, engine here which basically replace um, the radiator that you would normally see. Radiator is obviously um, air to water heat exchanger. Here we have a water to water heat exchanger, which transports the heat away from the engine itself to the interface plates, which are the demarcation points of the building. This keeps hydraulic separation, which is good for leaks. Leaks are isolated to various circuits and this machine has two different circuits. It has a HT circuit, high temperature circuit, and a LT circuit, low temperature. Uh, typically HT is in the order of LTHW temperatures, um, 8060 delta, and uh, the low grade heat is the sort of 50 to 40 degree uh, mark, and we tend to use those for applications like low surface temperature radiators or underfloor heating. We're around the other side of the engine. Um, we've got a centrifugal pump here uh, by Grumfoss. This exists purely to provide motivation to the water that exists between the jacket water plate heat exchanger and the building interface plate heat exchanger. We've also got lube oil pumps on this engine um, because our lube oil for the, uh, the building is bulk stored about 300 yards away. We've got transfer pumps that pump the dirty oil from the engine when it's spent after about three months of continuous running. Uh, and we've got similar pumps at the remote end that pump fresh oil back to give it an oil change. You're now gonna get a walk around of the Yenbacher 612 engine um, on about 60% load. It's capable of doing uh, 2 megawatts. Um, we're running this at about 60% at the moment. Follow me.
here with a CHP controller, uh, colloquially known as Diane, but it's for the Yembatter gas engine that we're talking about. Different parameters here. We're on electrical. You can see that we're on the synchronisation page and it shows the relative difference between uh, voltage and frequency. There should be very little difference here because um, we're in mains parallel operation, so they're connected. Um, overview gives basic parameters like current, voltage, again this is an 11 kV machine, the kilowatt output which you can also see in the corner here, reactive power, apparent power, frequency and power factor and your mesh voltages for um, line to line and line to neutral so 11 kV and 6.35. The Diane's quite a nice controller because you can um, view virtually all the engine parameters, um, even down to, um, if I go over here to uh, the cylinders pane, we've got ignition voltage, which is the average of all 12, which is between 18.4 and 20.1 kV, obviously depends on the spark plug gap. Knock, which shows uh, in terms of percentages, Knock noise, which is the millivolt measurement of the uh, transducer on the um, on the block itself. Valve noise and exhaust temperature. There's a graphical representation of ignition voltage. Here you can see the relative differences between each cylinder. So, for example, if you had one that was particularly higher than the others, you would expect that to have a worn spark plug or a, a spark plug with a bigger gap uh, than, than the others. The red indicates the limit, so they would need some changing or, or at the very least re-gapping. Uh, I think GE would always recommend changing. Um, exhaust. We're running at 560 degrees at the moment at this particular load. It does get up onto about 600 uh, 2 megawatts. Um, and controls page. This is one of the most important pages for interfacing the engine to the building. It shows the uh, set points for the water on the HT and LT circuits that we use for um, LTHW and uh, underfloor heating. I'll run through some of the other pages. This is so going to be in the video. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, stop it, start it again. No. Hi, this is John. Uh, welcome to video 612 from Raspberry Productions. That's a lie, we're talking about a 6112 engine. Cut. See uh, all the various things that, um, I don't know, let's start again.